Hey, hey, what's going on everybody? Alex with you here again. Thank you for dropping by for yet another chess video. In this video, I am super, super excited to bring you guys a brand new electronic, well, it's not really all that new, but new to me, an electronic chess set, the Millennium uh, King Performance. The box to which I've alluded to in my previous video, if you guys have seen at the very end, I introduced a couple of new chess sets that I purchased from House of Staunton recently. House of Staunton ends up running sales throughout the year and sometimes you can get a pretty good deal. I think uh, the largest I've seen was 30% up. That was just recently during Christmas. That was the biggest I've seen pretty much. Uh, if you are a golden member, which the membership you can get for a uh, hundred bucks, you can end up getting an additional 10% off on top of the existing clearance. So if let's say for example, you're getting 30% off for some you know event or season holidays and you add that to another, 10% uh, that's 40% off and that's a lot of times a really good deal you, you, on House of Staunton when it comes to buying large expensive chess sets like this uh, you can't go wrong because a lot of times you can get a chess set a lot cheaper than you can get anywhere else so with that being said I'm going to show you all that I've learned and I've had this chess set for not that long and I've been able to play with it and test it out and I just want to bring you guys my honest opinion about the overall performance, uh, the things I liked and the things I may have thought that could have been done better. Um, the uh, Millennium Company, I believe, is uh, from Europe. Um, I think they're, I, th I think they're a German, uh, but I'm not really sure. Don't quote me on this. It's a really, um, really, really awesome chess set. Really, really cool chess set for a number of things. I'm also going to, as I'm showing you this uh, chess set here, I'm going to kind of compare as far as the sizing and the proportions this chess set to the closest chess set that I have in size and that is going to be the Chestnut Air to kind of give you guys an idea as far as the dimensions and everything. Okay, um, so some of the things that I wanted to talk about, I wanted to do an uh, unboxing video in the beginning and I thought, hey, I'm going to hold this off until I actually physically unbox the chess set with you guys. Uh, but then I thought, hey, you know, that means I would have to wait for a while until I could uh, test it out. So the box, I just take my word for it, was really, the packaging was very supreme. This is a really nice professional looking box. The dimensions to which you can kind of gauge from the size of my head, I guess. <laughs> um, and the inside packaging was really good too. Uh, very good, everything was sealed up. It's got these like really professional styrofoam inside. Like I said, everything's kind of been opened up right here in the middle. You had the actual board the pieces came in a separate box right here. Then you had the um, the power adapter and the additional wires that were in here. You get a little instruction manual book um, that's presented to you right over here in the middle. I didn't really even take it out, but I'm guessing it kind of uh, guides you in differing languages on how, like how to operate the uh, how to operate the software and everything, how to operate the board itself, uh, and what other accessories you can purchase for this particular board. Okay, now uh, inside the box you get the uh, the chess set, the chess pieces, chess pieces are wooden and I'll show you guys up close in just a second and you get this little tiny canvas looking, almost like feels like a cotton or something, like a cotton little bag for your pieces that you know kind of closes in like this so that you can keep your pieces stored. You only get one bag. We've seen in other um, boards that you sometimes get two bags, one bag for the light pieces, the other one for the dark. But in this particular case, you just get the one bag. You also get a, a couple of additional wires. I might as well show it to you guys from this angle, but uh, you get this special wire here that uh, is a very unusual looking wire, like some of the connections for the, like the old mouse for the PC that you would connect to the computer. Uh, and I believe as far as, as I'm aware, this allows you to connect this board to a device called Chesslink. And Chesslink is a separate device that you can purchase, which I was given the option to purchase, but I decided that given that the board was already close to $600, I ended up not purchasing the Chesslink, but Chesslink can connect to this uh, device here, to this wire here, and will actually be able to, I believe, work with your cellular phone, with your iPad, with your computer to make this board be able to connect online. Now, having said that, um, and might as well since I'm already talking about it, uh, without the chest link, I believe you cannot, uh, 
you cannot link it online without the chest link. I may be wrong, there's an additional USB uh, connection at the back of the board right over here that I believe you can connect this board to like your computer and everything. I have not tested those things out yet because I was mainly just testing how the board operates right out of the box without all the additional accessories and just wanted to kind of give you guys my uh, my two cents I guess about what I think about the board and what uh, features I like about the board, what features I could have been improved, could have been better. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and kind of uh, zoom in the camera here and we'll take a look at some of the features here and I'm going to talk a little bit further about how this board operates and everything, okay? So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so to start things off with here, we have the Chestnut Airboard that actually is quite popular nowadays and it's been selling quite, quite a lot. It's a very successful board from a very successful company more or less and I just put it right next to this board to just kind of give you guys a little bit of a size comparison um, so yes the chestnut board is a little bit smaller but not by a whole lot uh, the actual dimensions of the this Millennium board here as you can see are, are, are quite you know quite large but as far as the actual squares on the board they're not that much different yeah they're a little bit different but not by a whole lot. And if we look at the the size of the pieces, uh, as you guys could see, like right here, um, they're not terribly they're not terribly different in size. I mean, look at the there's the uh, millennium, and there's the chestnut. Uh, or there is the uh, here's the millennium, here's the chestnut. A little bit different. Even the kings are not not that much different. Yeah, the millennium is a little bit bigger, but uh, not by much. Now the chestnut air is, I believe, it's a plastic uh, chest pieces, whereas the 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 millennium one are wooden, uh, and also there's a little bit of a difference as far as the the underside um, the underside felt on the chestnut is kind of more or less the type of underside felt that we we see in like the thin thin almost paper like, but it's still good enough for the size and the weight of the pieces, whereas the felt of the Millennium is going to be our normal thick felt, kind of like what we see in a lot of the wooden chest sets. So having said that, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you guys as far as the physical comparisons between the Chestnut Airboard and this Millennium King. Uh, we're going to put the Chestnut Board aside for now and take a closer look at the Millennium King. Alrighty. On the back side of the board, right over here, if I can kind of zoom in, yeah, we have the USB connection, the old USB port that sometimes they, we see these ports in like printers and stuff. On the right side, we have that uh, AC uh, port to connect to like your uh, electric adapter to power up the board. And then the C link, the chest link on the left side, right over here in the center, kind of looks like our, our old mouse port. That will uh, link to the chest link, so that way you can uh, connect this board online. That's about it. There's no other connections. Um, now the board itself is made really quite nicely, in my opinion. It's got a uh, this, but I believe this wood, nice wood finish here. Um, this part right here, the actual board has this wood grain look, but I'm not really sure. It might actually be possibly plastic um, it's kind of hard to tell I think it might be plastic but you do have a very nice overall feel and the, the borders are all wood and everything and the pieces are wood so everything looks really nice it looks like a professionally made board okay so let's take a closer look at the interface okay yes yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of burning through daylight here because it's already close to six o'clock I think it's 5 30 or so and that means the sun's gonna go down pretty quick and if then the sun goes down I'm not gonna have any light to do this video yes so I'm gonna kind of show you guys there's you get this like nice little adapter here a little bit out of focus but this adapter comes with uh, different extensions so you just pop it pop it open like this I really do hope this is in focus and this is your electrical adapter and then you choose the extension that will work with your country you just pop it in here and uh, we've already seen this before and it just clicks in there and now you have your adapter for whatever you need to 
Now the actual width of the wire, unfortunately, I, I don't know exactly how long it is, but I'd probably say it's like five feet or so. And then you have the, the plug on the other side. I really wish they would have made the, the wire a little bit longer because I do did realize that when I was playing this in the living room, I always had issues with the distance between the plug in the wall and my board. So I always have to use an extension cord in order to plug it in. Having said that, there's one little caveat that I'm gonna go ahead and mention to you guys right now as to the fact that this board actually will, here's the power button, will not light up, will not turn on unless you have this plugged into the wall. Um, yes, so this board does not have, as far as I'm aware, this board doesn't have an internal battery. And that means that unless you have the ability to plug it into the wall, you're not gonna be able to play it. Now, they do have an accessory. It's like a little tiny additional block. It's a battery block that has the same type of uh, output. And it's just basically this type of wire with a little block that you charge up and then you can play your games on the go like you would. But uh, as far as you know, as far as I'm aware, I don't think it has an internal battery. So I kind of wish it did because the other boards do like the DGT Pegasus we've seen has and pretty much every other board we've seen does have an internal battery and in this case you have to buy your own separate battery and carry it around like an appendage but it is what it is. When you plug it in the lights go on and uh, in these light conditions I'm not sure if you guys are going to be able to see it clearly and when when uh, you, the board gets turned on um, you have the interface that lights up here. And then the interface actually had, there's this like one button right here. If, you, if, if the interface is too bright for you, like let's say you're, you're playing in like a dim environment, then you can basically cycle through between different uh, lights right here, different brightness. I'm assuming that um, like if you're outside, uh, you can probably do brighter or, you know, if you're inside, I've been doing it on this particular, like the level one. You can also do it like this, so where it's not bright at all on the screen. But to me, I like this a little bit better. So, uh, yeah. Also, you get this additional little wire, I forgot to mention, you get this little wire that you can plug in. Here, I'm gonna unplug it. You can take your AC plug and you can plug in one side. This is interesting. And on the other side, it has the same plug, you plug it in. But in the middle, it has this knob, this module knob, basically the switch on and off. So that's kind of cool. I haven't seen this in any of the other boards, but there you have it. You have, you can just basically plug it in like this to the board in the top and just turn it on whenever you need to. So I'm assuming that when you have a battery plugged in to this uh, board, you can always switch it off. If you're transporting, maybe that way the electricity doesn't, I don't know. I really, I'm just, I'm just speculating, like hypothetically, I think it might be easier for the battery or whatever, but yeah, you have that additional wire. Not something I see regularly. By the way, if you guys see, see a lot of pink in around me and everything, it's because I'm doing this video in my daughter's room. So just, you, there's a lot of pink and pink bed and everything. So that's kind of cool. I uh, just didn't know where else to do this video and I really wanted to do it today, so I have the space here. Here's the interface. And the interface shows us the uh, the clock for the light and the dark. Uh, right now we don't have a game going, as far as I'm aware of. But you have these two buttons right here. Everything's kind of, at least in the beginning I had to kind of learn how to, how to use this, but this is very, very clean interface and really easy to use, in my opinion. When you hit the menu right over here, um, well, we have the comfort levels, which if we hit the comfort levels, we have the um, play and win. We have the friendly, normal, and advanced. So you have these four categories, okay? And then you choose one, and then you click okay. So then that gets saved. Then you have the ELO levels. You have the ELO of 1,000, 1,150, 1,300, then it becomes, so this is all normal. Then we go to the advanced section, 1450, 1600, 1750. Then we have the club section. I like how that's named club section. It's pretty cool. So now, now we belong to a club. 1850, 1950, and 2050 ELO. 
And then you just select whichever one you want to select. But we're going to go ahead and hit cancel. Other options include the uh, menu comfort, expert menu, comfort level. I've been on comfort. Language, English, Deutsch, French, Netherlands, Italiano, Espanol, Ruski, and back to English. So my other language that I speak is a Russian. I'm from Ukraine originally. So, but I can speak Russian. So this is kind of cool. If I had to give this board to my dad or something, that would be kind of cool. We can just, not a lot of boards do Russian. So that's kind of cool to see, but that's what we would expect probably from a European board like this. And whether or not you want to invert the board, you can invert the board if you want the computer to play as, as white pieces, or you can keep it the way that it is. So you can invert or not invert. If you don't invert, you'll get to play automatically as white. And basically you would, you know, you would always start as white. Do you want the tutor or do you not want the tutor? If you click for yes for tutor, what happens is that um, if you make a wrong move, it'll prompt you and you'll, it, it'll say like possible bad move and it'll show you what's gonna happen. And then you'll be provided the option of continuing or taking back. If you take back, it allows you to easily take back your move and proceed on pretty much at any level as far as I'm aware of. Also during tutor, you can ask for a hint uh, during the game and it'll kind of show you what the what the hint move should be This timer thing you can have it on timer for different times if you want to But I just have no time no timer so that way it's easier for me And then you have this contrast see you can have it contrast very contrasty not so contrasty really contrasty Like this would be really but that's too much they have it on five on default So it seems to be better because if you have it too much then Additional things from the background starts popping up and it's not very comfortable to look at LED brightness and we've already seen this before But we're just gonna keep it at where it was Sound this is important because it makes these little beeping sounds But you can have it on silent if you're playing in a silent environment. You don't want it constantly beeping You can have it at this or listen so five is pretty loud. I might not come through to the uh, to the camera as much, but I keep it at one It's enough for me to know that it's beeped and that's it uh, I'd rather just have a very faint beep and that'll be enough for me Okay, so going back um, Go to menu we have the move. What is this move? Okay? No, not this. I didn't want to show you guys this. I'm gonna show you there's the hint then there's two players. You can choose two players if you're playing um, over the board and it will it will remember your game and then it will uh, um, allow you to, to export your game as far as I'm aware. And then you can set up a position, verify, save load game. There you go. And that there you have it. That's pretty much that's pretty much how the interface works. It's a pretty good overall clean interface. In my opinion, I think it's it's really quite quite nice. So, uh, and then eventually, if you're if you're ready and you're you're uh, ready to go, you can click new right over here. There's a new button, and it'll say classic, or you can do um, like a what is it? Chess 960 is that what it's called? Chess 960. This is actually quite cool. I, I've I've played this. There's all these like classic. Watch classic chess uh, 285 uh, whatever it is position. But if we go back and then if we do it again and we do, now it's 840. So it arbitrary, like randomly will choose the position. And if you do this, what it is, is like, it'll basically set up your pieces in this particular fashion. So first we'll go uh, rook, then you'll go with uh, bishop, king, uh, I believe it's uh, knight, bishop, Queens in the corner like this and uh, Yeah, something like that. Okay, the opponent's pieces are actually going to be set up exactly the same way not inverted I actually thought is it going to be inverted? No, it's just exactly the same way. I played a couple of games this way It's wild when you play this like you're completely like your your thought process and everything is completely random because you cannot rely on any like openings or anything like that because the pieces are so randomized it's actually, in my opinion, a great 
a, a great side game that allows you to really think about the position at hand and uh, as opposed to memorizing your positions. So that's what I found really cool. I played through that. It was wild. But yeah, every time that you re-click new game, it'll choose a different one, like 657. So it kind of randomizes them for you. If you click yes, it'll get started with that particular position. Or you can just play a classic game, okay? Um, another thing as far as the physical characteristics of the game, when you press, for example, classic game, you press OK right here. Okay. There, because we have no timer, it's just going to sit like that. So I was like, okay, what's going on? So let's go ahead and take out a piece or whatever, right? I was like, nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. I was like, is, is my board broken? What, what's going on? So for a minute there, I thought, what's, going, what's happening? It's, what's happening is the fact that, that this board, actually you have to press it in. And when you press it in, you have to physically press into the square. And then the opponent, my light's going down. I'm gonna turn on, uh, I'm gonna, then the opponent starts to play. Okay, so yeah, I had to turn on the, the room light because it was getting a little bit dark. But, uh, so there's the board and basically, like I said, the way that you play here is there is, um, not to my knowledge, the pieces themselves are just wooden, just like wooden, normal wooden pieces. I don't think there's anything underneath of them, no sensors or anything like that. You have to basically depress the square that you're going to be working on. So I could even theoretically do it like this. I could just press it and then press it. I mean, it doesn't matter if you have a piece there or not. I mean, it assumes that you took the piece, you pressed it and, and voila. Okay, so this is the same type of technology that we've seen, I believe, in the Square Off Kingdom set. Um, it's been so long ago, but I, um, you know, we reviewed like the Chestnut Air. And the Chestnut Air, you just pick up the piece or move the piece, slide the piece, whatever, and it automatically recognizes it based on the fact that the Chestnut Air pieces have the sensors inside of them. So the board's pretty advanced and it just moves. So it's a lot more, you know, it's a lot less, uh, a lot less moving around here. Like it's, uh, you have to actually physically depress these squares and then you, you go from there. So yeah, that's about, as far as the physical characteristics, these are all your buttons that you have. You can take back a move, by the way, I think you can take back like this. If you wanted to take back your moves, at any point or you can go forward you just need to like when they light up you just need to uh, make sure that you press both of the squares it doesn't matter if you press the square first like like this for example it, it, it says okay take back the move yeah i can do it this way or take back a move i can press this one first and then this one and then it recognizes that i moved so um, that's, that's about it oh, as far as the, the physical characteristics of the board. Now, let me tell you guys my opinion as far as what I was able to like determine from the board and, and what I think about the board overall. By the way, this video is probably going to be my first video on reviewing this board. I do realize that, well, at this point I don't have the chest link, um, and I don't have the spare battery because I did not want to purchase them at this time and there are, each one is like an additional hundred dollars. You can get a little bit cheaper, but I decided that I'm gonna go ahead and review the board as is, as far as how it performs and how it operates straight out of the box. And then we'll, I'll make a subsequent video if you guys are interested in it, to where we will plug this into a chest link and take a look and see how it operates online and what other things you can do with it. Because I do believe that since we have that USB cord here in the back, I will have to power up my PC and figure out what we can do with that and test things out and really see what are some of the capabilities and everything of the board are. I'm, I'm really excited about really testing things out and taking this board to its full potential. But uh, today's video is going to be more focused on like the physical characteristics and kind of showing you guys what you get right out of the box, okay? So um, this is the part that's going to hopefully be helpful to some people and this is the part of the video where I uh, feel really excited because at least my videos are gonna feel like they have a purpose as opposed to maybe some other people reviewing these boards where they stop at just for showing you guys the physical characteristics. I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about what's important, okay? So, Chestnut Air, um, we've seen, sells for like 200 bucks. And I think uh, over the holiday season, it was like 100 and something, 160 something like that. 
that's a killer deal. It still sells for like 200 or not even 179 or something like that for a full functional board that right out of the box comes with its own internal battery that lasts for a considerable amount of time. It comes with sensing pieces that basically, you know, you don't have to press the board or anything and you move the pieces and everything's seamless and the connections are great and it, you know, you have your phone, it plugs in and you're online in seconds, in seconds, and then you're playing wonderful games and whatnot, okay? Uh, and then you have uh, almost $600 board from Millennium here um, that uh, has, you know, really I right out of the box, it has no capability of, of, of logging in online. It, uh, it has uh, no battery inside as we've seen. It, uh, the pieces themselves, like I was a little bit taken aback by the fact that uh, you have to depress the board itself. Um, and so I thought, is this, this a board something that's worth for people to purchase in 2023? I was about to say 2022. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so this is where this part's important for you guys to listen to because, because this company, Millennium, and I'm, like I said, one more time, I'm not really, this company is not working with me in any way. I purchased this board with my own money and I have... I have no reason to tell you guys anything good or bad or whatever. It's personally my honest opinion about this board. And whether or not you guys decide one day you'd want to purchase this board, well, I'm not going to be benefiting from your purchases or anything. So I'm just going to give you guys my personal opinion because I want my opinion to be helpful to you guys. What I think about this board. This board, from the back side of this or somewhere, it says that inside... The processor is some Cortex M7 with 300 megahertz, like some, apparently some good processing power, okay? That it gives you the dimensions, the display, everything. Playing strength is more than two, uh, 2400 ELO, even though over there, as you guys have seen, it does uh, 2050. I think if you, remember when I showed you guys the comfort levels between like play and win, Easy, normal, and then like uh, uh, advanced. I think if you put it for advanced, it's, it's going to give you an ELO of like 2400, maybe even more. Um, yeah, and then it has a program developed, uh, the King. The program is called the King by Johan de Konin. I, I'm gonna, I butchered that, whatever. But apparently when I was reading this, when I was looking at advertisements for this particular chess set, they said... The program that's within this uh, chess set is uh, really good, really good program. And I thought to myself, okay, well, just based on that, I might consider getting this, okay? And I had the extra expenses so and the sales and everything, so I ended up acquiring it. And let me tell you something, okay? The program in this uh, board is really quite advanced. I think it's really quite uh, different from a lot of the different AIs that I've tested before. And I'm not going to lie because I've tested a lot of boards nowadays. AI, artificial intelligence programs in some of these smart boards. So you have like, for example, the Pegasus. Pegasus is also a board that does not log in online as far as I'm aware. And the program itself that's inside is good and it works well, and it will allow you to play chess. But some of these AI that I've tested, and I've tested a lot of different ones, they kind of simulate an experience um, of like, sort of, okay, so it's kind of like the AI feels to me a lot of times it's like cut and dry. Like you know the difference between playing against a, a real person versus playing against the computer. If you guys have played a lot against the AI boards, you would know what I'm talking about because when you play against a computer, you can tell that you're playing against a computer because of the way the, the computer makes the calculations and the moves. The computer will look at the position and it will analyze and say, okay, these next three moves, here's uh, plus uh, 0.7, this one's plus 0.8, this one's plus 0.6, I'm gonna choose, I don't know, move number two, and it goes from there. And, and, and from what I've played, and I've played a lot of different boards, a lot of times it feels to me like the way that the computer operates is it wants to have a more or less of a cut and dry game. You start off, it does the moves, there's no surprises, it sort of moves. And then if you're choosing a low level, 
what happens a lot of times from, from my experience is that the computer AI will work fairly well and clean without me making mistakes. But if you chose like a, a lower level, what happens a lot of times is somewhere during the middle of the game, the computer program will just blunder and it'll blunder or it'll create some kind of a mistake. Uh, oftentimes a, a couple of inaccuracies and you can, you can kind of tell if you're really engrossed in the game and you're playing, you can kind of tell because you, you, a game of chess, when you're really engrossed and, and like this video, if you agree with me, it feels to me like a, like a music, uh, like, like a song. A really well orchestrated game between two uh, strong individuals of chess feels like a song. Somebody starts the melody off, the opponent continues that same melody. Somebody continues that same melody and so on it goes until somebody blunders. And then that blunder is like a, a part of the song that goes eh! and you're like, that was not like we were both feeling the game. Why did you suddenly like go and attack that free pawn when you knew that we were both working in this side? And like a lot of times when you play against the AI, and you're playing and you're getting somewhere and all of a sudden it just like takes a random piece or basically blunders a solid move or something. And you know how it feels in my opinion when you're playing a tough game and you're concentrating and somebody makes a blunder. Uh, from one standpoint if you're playing online you're like yay I'm about to win but the second, the second thought that comes into my head is if I'm really focusing and I am engrossed in the game I am like that blunder that you just made cost us the entire game because now uh, the game's gonna be over in about six moves or whatever, seven, and the enjoyment that I was getting out of playing the game with you is now not there anymore because you've just blundered. Do you guys ever get that feeling when you're playing online and somebody blunders and the game was excellent and then you're just like really kind of disappointed that you're just like, okay, we were really having a good game and now you just threw it away? If we're people that really care about the game and not just the points, that's what it feels like. It feels like, I mean, really, like, come on, dude. This board here, it doesn't blunder that much, especially on, like, normal level. If you hit it on normal, even their lowest rating, ELO of 1000, I thought it was going to be like a giveaway. But imagine a software that uh, is not afraid of making sacrifices. Imagine a software that's not afraid of uh, uh, doing tactical, uh, different tactical elements and, and, and choosing to do tactical maneuvering as opposed to just basically doing some kind of a take and cut and dry, take, 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 take. The first time, the first couple of times I played with this board, uh, it literally, it was like, oh, and it sacrificed it. It took a, it took a pawn of mine. And then I was like, that is absolutely nothing that I've seen an AI do. And this particular arrangement, this moves, this combination of moves felt to me so human, so realistic. It felt, felt to me like playing against somebody who is rated, like imagine playing somebody who's rated 1000 ELO. What would you say? How do we usually play games online, most of us? on a lower level. We usually play this way, at least as far as, as I remember. You go online, you play somebody, and basically you, you play carefully until somebody blunders. Then you recognize the blunder or their mistake. You take advantage of it. Then the opponent hopefully has not blundered too bad and they continue the game until somebody else blunders. Then you or they recognize the blunder and they continue on. And then eventually somebody blunders enough to where the game basically takes a turn pretty quick and then it, you know, somebody ends up winning, okay? So basically, uh, when you're playing chess, and this is true of, you know, pretty much any chess game, we play until somebody blunders, then, then it's our job to recognize the fact that that blunder has occurred, we, we take advantage of the blunder, and then we win the game, or we, you know, or we get closer to winning the game. But imagine a software that's been designed in such a way that the, the, the playing style of the AI for this board is really, in my opinion, so much better than so many other AIs that I've played with. So many other boards, they don't take this to the same level. It feels more or less like you're playing a human being, except a human being that doesn't make as many blunders and inaccuracies. 
And that is what makes this board really sweet. This is what makes it is because we are retraining our brain not to basically hope for a blunder to occur. With this board, we're retraining our brain to work in ways that we further and further increase our ability to recognize further and further ahead in the game. And that's how we will eventually strengthen our skill and get better in the game. We don't, because here's, and that's just, this is the truth of, of online gaming nowadays too, is because the, the standard, you know, whether we, we like it or not, but the standard of playing chess is basically who will blunder first and who will recognize those blunders. Wouldn't you guys agree with me? It's all about blunders. But what if a board doesn't really make as many blunders? What if the board, what if the AI chooses to act normal and chooses to act human? and chooses to do sacrifices. And this board really does feel like you're playing a human being. This is a different type of AI. This this board is, is pretty awesome. So uh, anyways, yes, even on level 1000, I've played and I was like, what is going on? You know, like I would I would assume a level 1000, you just, just blow through it and be like, okay, great. No. Even even towards the end, it was just like, oh, you know, what, what's happening? The, the board is over, like, what's going on? This is supposed to be easy, but it's not because this board, it doesn't blunder in normal circumstances, you know? It, it chooses, and AI chooses to blunder. I mean, AI doesn't just blunder, any AI, it doesn't just blunder to blunder. It, it blunders because it, it, it recognizes what your level is, and then it says, all right, here we go, some inaccuracies, some blunders for you, have fun, win the game, blah, 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 you know, like, that's what the AI is, is meant to do, that it, it, any AI, any of these boards can play at the highest level, but then nobody would win, and you would be unhappy about your board. But here, in this particular case, the ELOs that are provided in the interface that we've seen are really ELOs and not just hyper-inflated ELOs that you would think like, uh, I don't know, Lee Chess or something, no, no, the ELOs over there, this is where you really would train for, you know, to become a better chess player because you, like I said, if you're playing normal or advanced in this particular case, good luck, good luck anticipating that you're going to win because of a blunder. In fact, so many times I've played already in this board, I would be playing and literally I'm like sitting there and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm not like I'm just engrossed and I'm saying, no, that won't work because he's got me covered there. This won't work. This won't work. Not, neither of my moves that I can do work. Like, because he's got he's got everything thought out. And it's like, whew. Like, you don't expect him to just, like, blunder a piece away. Even, like, a two, three-step combination. You're just like, okay, this is... Yeah, this is solid. Even if you're like, okay, I'm about to sacrifice some pieces to have a tactical advantage and you realize that it wasn't really that much of an advantage anyways, and you ended up losing anyhow. This is a really good board. This is what I'm telling you guys about this, is I have not seen, and I'm going to be honest with you, maybe I haven't reviewed as many boards before, I have not played AI this good. Uh, maybe you guys have. Maybe Fritz or something, maybe the AI, AI is better, but right out of the box, this board is phenomenal. Yes, it, it has some drawbacks. The fact that you have to press on the squares like this, I'm feeling I'm like I'm getting an echo in this room. The fact that you have to press the squares, you have to press the square and then you have to go like this. Yes, it's it sounds like it's something of a old fashion, but at the same time, you don't make a mistake. You don't make a mistake. If your pieces are slightly falling off the board or something, you, you move the pieces, you don't have to be worried about, oh, the sensors in your pieces, oh, they cost your game to, uh, you know, to get messed up and everything. This is this is like one of those where where you really just you depress, you depress. It's very easy. As long as you can depress one square and depress the other square, it all works out. It's more safeguarded that way, meaning like your board won't get confused. We've seen square off board get confused uh, quite a lot. If you move the pieces or something gets placed somewhere else, it can get messed up. Another cool thing about playing this against, uh, you know, versus playing online. I know I like to play online. A lot of people like to play online. Uh, when you start it, without the sensor, I, what I would do is sometimes I would start the game and then I would go get coffee. And then I'd get disrupted. The kids would want me or something. And then I'd come back 
it just shows you how much time has passed, like 18 minutes, 50 something seconds, so that's okay. Take the next move, continue. If you were playing online, that wouldn't happen, especially if you're playing online real life, people would leave. That's one of the nice things in general about playing against the AI is that the AI is not bothered by the fact that you left for a while and then you decided to come back. The AI is okay, just keep going. My uh, final impression is that when I was playing these games here, I feel like you get a, a very rich gaming experience. In fact, I am one of those people that enjoys playing chess for the sake of thinking. And I've mentioned this before in some of the videos. I love the process of thinking. I, I am not a very skilled chess player, but I love the process of thinking. I love, I don't care so much for winning. I will give you points. I'll just, psh, psh, psh. but I love to sit here and say, this is good. We're thinking, we're thinking the, the, the variations, we're thinking the combinations, we're looking at different moves. I love that part of chess. I've always loved that part of chess. I really don't care what, if my score goes up or down. Does it really matter? Not to me. I love when the game is rich. And sometimes when you're playing online and your opponent blunders in the beginning and then just leaves. What kind of game is that? Take your own points, you know? I don't really care. I mean, yeah, I get points and it's like, okay, well, whatever. You know, don't blunder if you can if you're playing online. This board, basically, it's just and it's fair, but it's strong. And it will not blunder, unless you want it to blunder. If you play play for win option, it'll start blundering, but, uh, but then it blunders on purpose. If you're playing normal and you set your skill like uh, to the ELO of approximately where you are and you're playing this chessboard, good luck. Good luck, I'm, I'm just gonna forewarn you that this is a strong program. It's very, very uh, well developed. I feel like you get a very rich gaming experience. I do feel, honestly, do feel like you're playing against a human being, not an AI, just because the, the software in this program is so good. It's so realistic. It's not like cut and dry like a lot of the AIs. And uh, you overall, in the end, get away, even if you lose, you get away with a, a very rich and, and overall very uh, positive, positive game. Because in, in the end of the game, if you enjoy the richness of the game, that's, 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 that's all that matters, honestly, if you think about it, that really, if, you, if the game was rich and interesting, then it was all worth it. Uh, if you're playing and it's just playing normal or whatever, you know, it's like, eh. to be honest with you guys, if you wanted me to do a video where I review additional capabilities of this board as far as so, uh, connecting it to chest link, taking it online, sure, we can do that. But uh, if, if it was just my decision, I enjoy playing on this board very much so. In fact, right now, I've been, I'm going to be playing this board for quite a while now. I think that uh, thank you, Millennium Company, for, for developing this board. Thank you for making something that feels great, feels real, feels very human-like, and, and gives me a great, great game. And all in all, I've all the games I've played, I've had to give up. Like, I would have... A, a lot of pieces left and I'd have to give up because everything was just like, no single AI has made me think this much as, as much as this board. Um, and I know Millennium is, like I said, it's on a different tier. They make boards that are more professional. Uh, Millennium has not sent me any boards. They are not affiliated with me. So if a Millennium wishes to uh, get in touch with me and send me some of their other boards, fantastic, I'll review those. Like I said, I'm really, really quite happy with this board and I'm probably going to play this board here for an extended period of time. If I didn't have to review the DGT board that I got, I would I would just kind of sink in and play this board from now on. It's it's great. That's all I have to say. It's 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 a fantastic board. It plays super well and and the game, the overall game experience is it's really good. It's really good. If you want to get better there's one of these boards and you want to get better without having to play online against real people or whatever. This is a great board to consider. It's $600 or $550. I know it's quite a bit, but if you have the opportunity to test this board out, you'll see what I mean. And uh, well, that's pretty much it as far as what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Uh, hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. I know I've kind of dragged this video out more than I wanted to, but I just wanted to give you guys my thorough, honest opinion 
And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put a link below where you can get this board. I'll put a link on the House of Staunton where you can obtain the board. Uh, I believe Chess House might also have this board for sale and a couple of other companies. But Amazon too, I think, has carries this board too. Anyways, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I know my all my videos are longer than they need to be, but so I do apologize. But hope you guys found this video interesting and, and, and hopefully you guys have taken away something about, you know, my thought process as far as how AI works in general, what to expect out of chess, and uh, stay tuned. My next video is going to be about the DGT board, uh, so it's going to be really, really exciting. Okay, see you guys next time.